Eric, Erica Halliday. Erica, oh, here you are, Eric. Erica, you, could you stand up a moment? Come and come and talk to me. Now, you're a you're a, a farmer here too. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Been uh, my family's been farming here since 1860. Now, the developers came to you and said, "We want to put some turbines on your land, and we'll pay you for it." Uh, did, are you allowed to say how much? Uh, 25 years ago, they came to us and they said that um, that they'd like to put turbines on the property at $25,000 a wind turbine. And we believe that was, um, at the time, we thought they were a scourge on the landscape. But when they said that, we thought, they don't look too bad. But luckily, we've had a fair bit of time to think about it since then. And you've changed your mind. You've gone back to them and said no. Yeah, we've changed our mind. We've consulted our neighbours and consulted our family, our kids. My kids do science. We've realised it's a gross misallocation of resources. I mean... Australian farmers feed 60 million people in the world. Less than 1% of those people in, in the Australian population are farmers and we do it on less than 3% of the land. That land should be used for growing food and that land should be used for other ways of helping the environment, which is using grazing animals to sequester carbon. Let's, let's talk air. about that because you, we talked about this before we started. You, you, you're very careful in your grazing practices. You, you rotational graze, so you move the cattle, the sheep get moved on before they've gone down to the bare, bare earth and you, you, you then seed it with grasses. The idea is to keep grass cover there all the time. Mm. Why? We're feeding microbes actually and those microbes are actually taking the carbon from the plants and, and, and burying it deep in the soil. So we're actually sequestering the carbon from the atmosphere and burying it in the soil. That's, that's the whole aim. And we didn't see any point in covering our soil in concrete or solar panels and we also love our beautiful environment as well. So by, by, by doing that, you're also, it's better farming because it improves drought resistance and productivity. But so you are, you are reducing the carbon in the atmosphere in a direct and obvious way, one that's probably much, much more effective than sticking up a lot of wind turbines. That's right. And, and we realise too that even if we stop emissions tomorrow, it may take up to 100 years to sequester that carbon, that mother load of carbon out of the sky and put it in the soil. Mm. So our aim is to do our bit and actually, actually work because carbon in the atmosphere is bad, but carbon in the soil is really good, holds water, feeds microbes. It's a win-win. Just to, just to talk to the people here, it seems to me that this story about, you know, you, you'd all know it. You live here, you farm, most of you. You, you know about soil carbon. You, you know plants were put on Earth 500 million years ago to do just that, to take carbon from the atmosphere and put it in the soil. But I suspect this isn't being taught in our schools. I mean, your children, your grandchildren are not getting taught this. Do you think that the quality of education in our schools is one of the issues here that people just don't understand it? Hands up. Yeah. There's a related issue then that people are, people are very concerned about. 